So after talking to my partner at work, I decide I'm going to go straight home and I'm going to look this guy up. Now, I, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, that's kind of strange, maybe even kind of weird. We're not even going to say stalkish, right? It's some kind of stalker vibe to it. No, no, no. I had to know who this guy was, right? So I go home, just do a, a quick search on the guy. Nothing crazy. But what I find just amazes me. For one, he's an award-winning author, best-selling author. That's one. He does tons of philanthropy work. Tons of it throughout the community, throughout the country, in multiple countries. He's all over giving, giving, giving. He's just one of those guys. And guess what? He's a multimillionaire. So none of this makes sense to me, right? Here I am thinking Mr. Jacobs is wanting to know about my shoes and this guy could buy millions of the same type of Stacey Adams shoes that he's talking about he wants me to take off my feet and give to him. I have so many questions at this point. I can't wait to get back to work to be able to stand in front of him and ask all of these questions. Now you may wonder how I got to that point and I'd love to explain it to you. So I tell you what, you give me 10 more minutes, I'll walk you all the way through this story. My name's Lorenzo, welcome to Handles. Everyone has a grip on life. Everybody feels like they have a handle. Afraid to share the mistakes. The stories are what connect us. They are the key. We're running out of time. So at this point in my life, I get an opportunity to go to a complete different city and open up a new store. And I'm excited. I've never done it before. Like, I don't even know the steps, right? I'm just going through the agendas and the itineraries and making sure I'm staying on track. But that's not important. The best part about opening up a new store is meeting new people, right? Whether it's associates, consumers, doesn't matter, right? Just meeting new people was the most important piece and it was the funnest part. So I noticed every Tuesday at 10.30 in the morning, exactly at 10.30 in the morning, there would always be the same customer that would come in. Let me describe this guy to you, right? About six foot one Caucasian cat, older gentleman, looked to be maybe in his mid 60s, maybe touching 70s. He would have some ugly tan fishing shorts. You know those fishing, fishing shorts that have like all the pockets on the side for, for no use, for no reason, just sitting there? Yeah, it was one of those tan shorts, right, with all the pockets that were clearly too small for his build, but that's not important. He would have on a golf shirt, like a little t-shirt that's a, uh, um, maybe a tannish and or white color, just depending on which one he wore that day. And then most importantly, he would have these busted tan sandals, right? And I mean, the straps on the top looked like they were barely holding on. These shoes had to be, I'll say at least 30 years old, at least, and this might be pushing it. But he was a unique character, right? He used to always come in and say what's up to everybody. Really good, great guy. So one day I decide, I want to go up and strike a conversation with this guy. I want to know who he is. I want to get to know him. I, I, man, I want to spend some time with this cat. So I go up, I introduce myself, he introduces himself, and we'll call him Mr. Jacobs. And Mr. Jacobs was exactly what I described at the very beginning, but he had a very unique personality with him too, right? You could tell he was extremely intelligent, smart guy, right? So we would always talk about just life, you know? Of course he was coming in looking for certain things to buy, but they all would be small things, little trinkets, like, hey, I'm looking for a screw for this, or a hammer for this, or a measuring tape to do this because I'm building this for my granddaughter, whatever that might be, right? But we would always end up having conversations about life. But one thing he always ended up talking about was my attire, mainly the shoes that I would have on. And it would just throw me off, right? I'd be like, Mr. Jacobs, look, they're just Stacy Adams shoes, man. I call them pointers. And you can imagine, they're just 12, we'll say, yeah, I wear about a size 12 and a half. Stacy Adams shoes, they're brown. They have the pointy tips to them. Just basic shoes, right? But dress shoes, nevertheless. And he really liked these shoes. So every week 
on Tuesday at 1030 in the morning, here comes Mr. Jacobs. And at this point, I kind of caught up to when he likes to come in. So I would meet him at the front door. We'd walk around the store, just talk about life. But he would still be in the same outfit, right? Fishing shorts, golfing shirt, busted sandals. Every week, every week. So one day he says, you know what, Lorenzo? I have got to get these shoes that you've been wearing. I'm going to get these shoes. Give me some ideas of where I can go to get them and what kind I should be looking for. So I started sharing some ideas with them as to what I do for shoe shopping and then how to get maybe some shoe shining material that can kind of make it look real nice and neat for them. And then that way, every time he pulls it out the box, it's ready, racked and ready to go for him. So it's around Christmas time. Mr. Jacobs comes in. He's got this big smile on his face, right? I meet him at the front door. What's up, Mr. Jacobs? What you looking for today? How can I help you? So we start walking through the store, talking about life, talking about what he's going to do for the week. And he says, Lorenzo, I got to tell you. The other day, I went and picked up those shoes that we've been talking about. Yep, those shoes that you have right there on your feet. I was able to go pick those bad boys up. And I love how they feel. They were fantastic. I said, well, that's cool. Under what occasion did you wear them? What did you do with them? He said, I got a chance to take my daughter out to dinner for the first time in a long time. And the entire time at dinner, all she was doing was complimenting my attire and most importantly, my shoes. So dinner was a hit. We had a great time. We're going to do dinner again in about a month when she's able to come back down. So well, that's cool, Mr. Jacobs. That's what's up, man. I'm glad you had a good time and I'm glad that you got the shoes and we start talking about how to make sure to keep them nice and neat, how to maintain, keep them in the box, so on and so forth. So I turn around and one of my coworkers says, hey, Lo, do you know who that is? I'm like, yeah, I know who that is, man. That's Mr. Jacobs. He comes in every Tuesday at 1030. Like, you don't know who he is? I'm surprised he hasn't said hello to you before. He said, no, 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 no. Do you know who that guy is? And I said, yes, I just told you that's Mr. Jacobs. And so my coworker says, Lo, do me a favor. When you get a chance, I want you to go home and look up that guy and we'll talk about him tomorrow when you get to work. I said, all right. Now at this point, I'm kind of nervous. You know, I don't know if, you know, Mr. Jacobs is a serial killer. I don't know what's going on, right? But I'm intrigued. I'm very intrigued. And if I remember correctly, you guys should now be caught up. Well, let's fast forward. So after finding out all this information about Mr. Jacobs, I can't wait to get back to work. I can't wait to get back to work, not only to talk to my coworker about what he was telling me about, right? Because this is what he was probably trying to tell me. He's like, look, man, this guy's a somebody. This guy just isn't Mr. Jacobs. He's a somebody. So I got to go have a conversation with my coworker, and then I can't wait until next Tuesday. Because next Tuesday at 1030, I'm going to have so many questions for Mr. Jacobs, and I can't wait. And of course, Tuesday, 1030, right on the dime, here he comes in. And we start having our basic conversations. Now I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting until we get to the end of those nice pleasantries just to drop it on him. But he catches me before I'm able to start asking these questions. He said, you know what, Lorenzo, I have to thank you again for spending time with me, talking me through a little bit of my outfit, my attire, most importantly, my shoes. That dinner and that engagement that I had with my daughter made such a huge difference. I mean, we are on a whole nother page in our life just because of the outing that we had. And I could tell he was sincere, like he really enjoyed the fact that what I was able to share with him about the shoes that I wore really made a difference in his new relationship or his upgraded relationship with his daughter. So I was taken aback at this point. You know, I, I didn't want to hit him with all these questions. And to be honest with you, I had it in the back pocket. I had a few questions I was going to ask him. Well, I say a few. A lot of questions that I was going to ask him. I, I didn't even pull it out at this point because I realized that it wouldn't have made a difference. He never shared that side of his life with me for a reason because that's not what was important to him. So as a few more months go by, he continues to open up to me a little bit more and a little bit more. And we're, we're getting real deep into our lives at this point. And he shares with me how he's been able to fight off cancer for quite some time, but it keeps coming back and it keeps coming back. And this next time that it came back, it's really hit him kind of hard and it's making a huge impact on him. And he's starting to reflect on different things in his life. And it hits me. 
the conversations that Mr. Jacobs and I are having about shoes or outfits, that's not what the conversations were about at all, right? I, I don't think he was impressed with the shoes I was wearing. I think he was impressed with my panache, how I carried myself, my convivial personality, and most importantly, my youth, right? So the stage of the life that I was in at that moment, I think is what he was impressed with. And for me, I was impressed with certain things about him, right? His success, his mind frame, his accomplishments, and yeah, even his pocketbook in a sense. So the shoes weren't things that we were actually talking about. We were talking about the ability or the opportunity to be able to switch shoes if we could. If I would have had a chance at that point in my life, I would have changed shoes with Mr. Jacobs. And I think at the same point in his life, he would have gladly changed shoes with me. We could have traded off and been happy. Now, unfortunately, I, I lost touch with Mr. Jacobs because at some point he ended up back in the hospital and, you know, cancer does what cancer does, unfortunately. But he did leave me a lot to think about. You see, while we're all out here, dog eat dog world, trying to chase a buck, there are people like Mr. Jacobs who isn't chasing anything. He's coming in at 1030 on a work week on a Tuesday with some busted shorts, a wrinkled golf t-shirt, and some horrible sandals and he's living life to the fullest. And he knows no matter how much money he has in his pocket, no matter how accomplished he is, no matter how successful he is, he would still in that current state love to trade shoes with somebody like you or I, just to have another opportunity to have the youth and or the health. So I'll leave you with this. Be very grateful for the shoes you currently fill because I can promise you that somebody somewhere will absolutely love to trade shoes with you at this very moment. Thanks again for joining me on another episode of Handles. I sure hope this story added value. If it did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, hit that like, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel. You want more Handles? You can follow me on any one of my social media links and or go directly to the website at the bottom of this page. Like always, thanks again for your time, your support, and most importantly, your feedback. I'll catch you guys next time, right here on Handles.